uh, in our program. Six new players, um, new associate head coach, uh, new assistant coach, um, climate of college athletics. I mean, there's just so many different things going on. So, um, love this program, love the game, and, and uh, you know, excited for the future, but a lot of change at the same time. Um, like Chris said, you know, Western Kentucky, and five days away, up August 17th in Rupp Arena. Uh, exhibition fan day after that for kids for autographs and stuff. Um, September 1st, uh, Pittsburgh, 84 Lumber uh, Classic Challenge. Uh, we're trying to break an attendance record uh, for Kentucky Volleyball, which is just under 10,000. Love to see our fans uh, get 10,000 people in Rupp Arena for that and try and get more fans in Pittsburgh on Sunday the 3rd. Um, we need your help in that area and, and uh, our program Women's athletics need the help of you guys to help us get there, and, and you know I, I would love to try and do anything I can for the program and, and your help to, to help us try and fill Rupp Arena. Um, it's uh, you know we we got three returning All Americans, several great players in our program coming back, five freshmen transferred from Oklahoma. Um, a lot of great things, good practices to start with. Um, at this point, and I'm certainly glad I'm coaching the SEC right now with realignment and all that type of stuff. It's a great league to be in, so um, can't wait to get going next week. All right, questions? How different is it just approaching games in Rupp Arena as opposed to kind of a more cozy feeling there in Memorial? Yeah, I mean, it's, we, we got the opportunity to play there in 2012 um, a lot better than I thought in terms of depth perception and sight lines. Um, but you know, until we get a practice in there, until we get a, an exhibition, I'm glad we can play Western to kind of get a feel for what is the environment going to be like. And I have no doubt that our, our fans and our attendant or our season tickets have already gone up a little bit. So um, you know, I think it definitely will be a home court advantage, like Memorial, but in a completely different way. So, what are you looking to accomplish in the scrimmage versus Western, coach? Um, that's a great question. We're, we're implementing a lot of new things in, in the style of play that we're doing, so want to kind of see that under the lights. Um, there's a lot of people battling for playing time, probably more depth than in every position than we've had in the last couple of years, so um, getting some opportunities for people to play and see what they can do when, when the live situation is occurring. Um, and, you know, like you know, all coaches at this point in time, you're playing against yourself all the time, so what's it look like when someone has a completely different style? So how we respond to adversity and, and how we get some new players, some opportunities to compete. You added Madison Lilly to the staff this year. What does she bring and what can she do to help Emma grow and be even better after her SEC player of the year here last season? Yeah, I mean, obviously her, her resume speaks for itself as a player here at Kentucky, a national player of the year, a national champion. So, but her experience as a professional, you know, learning how to adapt, adjust to different situations uh, is huge for a setter to know. And she has a ton of confidence and a ton of intuition about the game that she can relay to our setters especially and then others but uh, her experiences um, will really give those guys uh, an advantage I think. Coach you mentioned the freshman class I know you haven't had too many practices at this point but what have you seen out of them and what kind of roles do you think some of them could have this season? Uh, they're gonna make my job very difficult to, and, and, and in a good way because uh, they're, they, they're gonna give themselves opportunities to play they're already doing that. Um, the physicality that they bring is impressive, um, and the speed. I mean, they're just they just do things naturally that other people can't. Um, and so they're and they just they're just you would say in our program character is culture, and they just bring an, an enormous amount of character to our program, like the, the people they're joining. Um, so if you recruit that first, you got a chance to to be consistent. You have a sport that requires so much precision. Sort of thing. How does that uh, new environment, depth of field that you mentioned, come into play, and does it make it more challenging for any particular spot? Yes, it, it, it will, and the depth perception will make a difference. It's, it's probably just a matter of time and getting used to it. You know, because the depth perception is, is changed, um, we're running a little bit even faster offense than we have in the past, so that precision will become uh, very important as well. Um, but. The speed is really hard for the middle blocker to stay in the middle of the court. The ball leaves the setter's hands and it is flying at a, a, a top speed for them to try and close the block and set up our defense is a very challenging situation. So um, that's the type of stuff that will um, – and then the back row people, when you are going so fast, is trying to get them to be stopped on contact so they can pursue. Um, I'm going to get into the weeds here in a little bit. but. Um, 
Coach, you've had any practice inside rough to see how that plays out, or was it going to be wait until you're live in the game and see how it goes? We're not 100% sure. We definitely have a, a, a practice the day of, you know, like a certain pass prior to playing. We're hoping to get in there the day before and get a better sense of what it's like. It's not even just a depth perception, but we played them in 12. The, the airflow to keep a big place like Rupp Arena, um, you know, the right temperature, you know, it was different, a little bit different. Obviously, without airflow on Memorial Coliseum with no AC, there wasn't, we didn't have that issue, but uh, so this will be a little bit of a difference. You happy there's AC in Rough Marina? <laughs> oh my God! Yes. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. We didn't know where to begin with that, but uh, yeah, we've had seven practices now, all in air conditioning, and we probably had to wipe the floor. I can count less than you know five. And if this was last year Memorial Coliseum, we would stop every play. And that so that takes away repetitions. It takes away time. You know, it's just a huge advantage. So, Greg, on that on that subject, I mean. Talk about renovating the world for years. What's it like for somebody who's been there the whole time to see it actually start to happen? To see the fences up and actually starting to do it. Dream come true. I mean, we've talked about this for years. We talked about this for several years before COVID and, and you know all that type of stuff. But um, you know, we've been kind of selling that dream for a long time, and, and so to finally get shovels in the ground and. and you know, ceilings dropping, and you know, remember that big gray box in the top of Memorial is no longer there. So you can fit a center hung scoreboard. I don't even know what was inside that box. I'm scared to know. But um, yeah, I mean, it's you know, our players deserve the opportunity to play in a facility like that. I mean, obviously, you know, we've had a lot of success, but you know, female athletes deserve to play in a top-notch facility like the new Memorial. And I'm excited for that. When you recruit to it. You're kind of set on a vision, I suppose, at this point. How do you how do you go about saying, hey, this? It may look a little rough right now, but it's going to be. Well, we have, we have a recruit on campus right now, so I, I think it's kind of actually good for them to actually be here and kind of see and feel, hey, there is construction going on. This is changing. When I get here, it could be a completely shiny new. I mean, it, it, it may be arguably the best facility in our sport in the country when it's all said and done, so it's going to be a great thing. Coach, with the SEC right now, you have to share your regular season title if everyone's neck and neck at the end and there's no conference tournament. Is that going to change this year or in coming years to advance the sport in this region of this conference? So, uh, glad you brought that up. We, we voted to have a championship in the league, um, and there's still a question whether it's going to be 2024 when Texas and Oklahoma join or in 25 uh, when Vanderbilt also joins. Um, it was a long, long years of conversation uh, for it because it's not just the championship that's trying to navigate Thanksgiving week um, and where you play and what type of neutral facility or, or home court. Uh, but I, you know, love the chance now that, it, you know, technically your players get to compete for two championships, the regular season championship and the tournament championship. And, and so being in that type of environment prior to the NCAA tournament puts that type of pressure on your teams. and you got to perform, so we're super excited about that when it, when it comes down. Speaking of the scheduling, Coach, when you talk about realignment, you being a sport that's an Olympic sport and a women's sport on top of that, what's your viewpoint of how this can change the landscape of athletics for your team and teams like it? Um, yeah, I, I don't understand, you know, to be honest with you, and uh, I understand, don't get me wrong, I know why it's happening, the money, you know, and, you know, but I, if you're making the decisions that are being made in some of the leagues, to me, it's either desperation um, or they haven't been a student athlete at the highest level to experience what it's like to travel across the country and then try and get back and study. Because I'm certainly glad our league is in the situation we're in to continue on. Um, and you know, you know, what thought was has gone into sports like ours when female athletes are involved, and I'm not sure there's enough thought being put into it. And um, you know, we chartered a plane to Stanford last December for the NCAA Sweet 16. It wasn't a jet, but it was a charter, and it took us six hours to get there with a stop in Denver to refuel. Imagine trying to do that, play two matches, come all the way back, you know, or, you know, being on the West Coast and trying to do it multiple times throughout the year. I mean, it just, I don't know what, what common sense or any sense made, it, it's made, and it's obviously money, so it's, it's unfortunate. Can you talk about uh, maybe some of the significance or the goals that the team has to get back to that um, national championship level like you were in 2020? 
Yeah, it's, I mean, obviously winning the national championship is difficult. In our sport, only 12 universities in the entire country have ever done it. We were the 11th, the Wisconsin was the 12th, we were the first SEC, so it, it's a challenge. Um, but you need to be physical, you need to play clean, um, you need to serve really tough because our game, because our game is so physical, if you just let the other team pass right to your setter, you're going to have a real hard time playing defense. Uh, so being able to neutralize teams' offense with a weapon of, of our serve is super important. Um, and then on the flip side, having serve receivers that can get the ball in the middle of the floor so that our setters can run the show and Emma can distribute the ball between you know, five great attackers. So huge, hugely important. And, and then being good under pressure. How is Megan fitting in right now? Uh, Megan's had a great few days of practice. Um, she was looked like a deer in the headlights in the spring, to be honest with you. I mean, a lot of, a lot of things going in and out of her brain. Um, but uh, she has been uh, very good the last couple of days and, and performing and, and competing. And, um, you know, when you're 6'5", you can attack the ball at that point. It's, it uh, gives you an advantage. So she's doing well. Coach, can you speak to any off-season growth and improvements you've seen from your returns? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've, you know, all of our returns have gotten better. And if, if you go to someone like Ajani Teeler, who's in, you know, in her fifth year with us now, um, she was you know, going through some changes in the spring with our new style and, and some of the things we were doing. It, it, it's a little bit of a shock, you know, and so, but now she's taking that information, putting it into use, gotten stronger over the summer and, and very dynamic. So it's um, really good. Emma Grohm, for example, her serve has gone to another level, which has been important. Um, I'm going to miss someone. You know, every single one of our returners has gotten stronger in the, in the weight room over the summer, Chris Burlock. And, and we were a little rough in the spring. I mean, we lost to Louisville in five, we lost to Pittsburgh, we lost to AU, and, and so I'm not concerned about that, but the way we're playing right now in practice, you can tell they've been working on it over the summer. Everybody good? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks,